जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जन्नवल्लभ गिरीवरधारी कपि जनवल्लभ गिरीवरधारी सदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरावन चारे चमुना तीरावन चारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन बल्लभ गिरीवरधारी गोपी जन बल्लभ गिरीवरदारीसदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन जसोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरावन चारे तीरावन चारे यमुना तीरावन चारे तीरावन चारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी राधव कुंज बिहारी थैंक यू थैंक यू मच गुरु जय ओम विष्णु पाद परमहंस प्रभुकचारी अष्टोत्तर श्री श्रीमद ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज प्रभु पाद की जय इस खान फाउंडर चार्य शिव प्रभु पाद की जय जय ओम विष्णु पाद परमहंस प्रभुकचारी अष्टोत्तर श्री श्रीमद भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी महाराज प्रभु पाद की जय नाम चार्य शिव हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री द्वैत गदाद हर शिव सारे गौर भक्त वृंद की जाय श्री श्री राध कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम खून राध खून हिर गोवर्धन की जाय श्री मायुपुर धाम की जाय श्री वृंदावन धाम की जाय जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जाय गंगा माई की जाय यमुना माई की जाय भक्ति देवी की जाय तुलसी देवी की जाय अनाथ कोति वैष्णव वृंद की जाय श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाय ग्रंथराज श्रीमद भागवतम की जाय समवेर भक्त वृंद की जाय गौर प्रेमनंदे all glories to the assembled devotees all glories to the assembled devotees all glories to assembled devotees all glories to shri guru and shri goranga all glories to shri prabhupad om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate 
ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो दिस मॉर्निंग विल बी रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम फिथ कैंथो चैप्टर थर्टीन टेक्स सिक्स त्रिवेद प्रभु प्लीज प्रसज्जति सज्जति क्वापि क्वापि लथा पुजाश्रयस थद आश्रया व्यक्त फदद्विज फदद्विज स्पृहः पिवह क्वचित क्वचित कदाचित कदाचित धरि धरि चक्रतस चक्रतस सुसं सुसं सक्यम सक्यम विधत्ते विधत्ते बककंक गुद्रायि प्रसज्जति क्वा पिलथा पुजाश्रयस तदाश्रया व्यक्त पदद्विजस्प क्वचित कदाचिद धरि चक्रतस्त्रसन सक्यम विधत्ते बककंक गृद्रायि सक्यम विधत्ते बककंक गृद्रायि प्रसज्जति क्वा पिलथा पुजाश्रयस प्रसज्जति क्वा पुजाश्रयस तदाश्रया व्यक्त पदद्विजस्प हा क्वचित कदाचिद धरि चक्रतस्त्रसन क्वचित कदाचिद धरि चक्रतस्त्रसन सक्यम विधत्ते बककंक गृद्रायि प्रसज्जति क्वा पिलथा पुजाश्रयस तदाश्रया व्यक्त पदद्विजस्प हा क्वचित कदाचिद धरि चक्रतस्त्रसन सक्यम विदत्ते बककंक गृद्रायि Anyone else would like to chant? Prasajjati kwa pilata bhujasraya Sadasraya avyakta pada dvijaspruha Kvachit kada chit darichakra tatstrana Kvachit kada chit darichakra tatstrana सक्यम विद्यते बका कंग कंद्रुग्रुधे Anyone else? Okay. If you could repeat after me. 
Prashad Jati becomes more and more attached. Kwapi, sometimes. Lata Buja Ashriya, who takes shelter of the soft arms of his beautiful wife, which are like creepers. Tat Ashraya, who are sheltered by such creepers. Of Yagtapada, who sing unclear songs. Tuija Sprita, desiring to hear birds. Kuchit, sometimes. Kadachit, somewhere. Hari Chakratatrasan, being afraid of the roaring sound of a lion. Sakyam, friendship. Vidati, mix. Bakal Kankagridare, with cranes, herons, and vultures. Translation purport by His Divine Grace. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Sometimes the living entity in the forest of material existence takes shelter of creepers and desires to hear the chirping of the birds in those creepers. Being afraid of roaring lions in the forest, he makes friends with cranes, herons, and herons and vultures. Purport. In the forest of the material world, there are many animals and birds, trees, and creepers. Sometimes the living entity wants to take shelter of the creepers. In other words, he wants to be happy by being embraced by the creeper-like arms of his wife. Within the creepers, there are many chirping birds, which this indicates that he wants to satisfy himself by hearing the sweet voice of his wife. In old age, however, he sometimes becomes afraid of imminent death, which is compared to a roaring lion. To save himself from the lion's attack, he takes shelter of some bogus sannyasis, swamis, sorry, yogis, incarnations, pretenders, and cheaters. Being misled by the illusory energy in this way, he spoils his life. It is said, Harim Vina Mitim Na Taranti. No one can be saved from the imminent danger of death without taking shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The word Hari indicates the lion as well as the Supreme Lord. To be saved from the hands of Hari, the lion of death, one must take shelter of the Supreme Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. People with a, four, with a poor fund of knowledge take shelter of non-devotee cheaters and pretenders in order to be saved from the clutches of death. In the forest of the material world, the living entity first of all wants to be very happy by taking shelter of the creeper-like arms of his wife and hearing her sweet voice. Later, he sometimes takes shelter of so-called gurus and sadhus who are like cranes, herons, and vultures. Thus he is cheated both ways by not taking shelter of the Supreme Lord. O Magyana Timarandasya Gyan Jana Shalakaya Chakshun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torch light of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances unto him and all members of Shri Guru Parampara. Sometimes the living entity in the forest of material existence takes shelter of creepers and desires to hear the chirping of the birds in those creepers. Being afraid of roaring lions in the forest, he makes friends with cranes, herons, and vultures. So it's said that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but by the content in the book. Similarly, Dr. Martin Luther King, he says that one day we should live in a nation where we will not be judged by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. So what does this mean? So even back then they understood that this age of Kali were very superficial and shallow. Based off of external appearances, one makes judgment. Just like when we distribute books, we see the type of interest that people have. They want to decorate the body. When we offer them a book, they refuse. But the next person next to us is selling bracelets, crystals. They want to decorate the body. So they're very superficial. 
their manda sumanda matayo manda bagya hi upadrutaha manda they're very lazy when we when we ask for a donation they refuse and sometimes when we ask them for more donation they give us the book back but they're willing to spend five ten dollars even fifteen dollars for a cup of coffee but they can't give more to a transcendental knowledge sumandam matayo they're misguided sometimes a person he searches for truth but he comes in contact with the cheater and therefore he gets misguided just like there's a lot of people on the internet they're they're looking up information on the internet but the people that they're hearing from they're not self-realized nor is their knowledge coming down from a bona fide source so they get misled manda bhagya they're unlucky Srila Prabhupada, he uses this example, if someone's offering you a billion dollars and you refuse, does that not make you unfortunate? It does. And they're upadrutaha, they're always disturbed. Yesterday I, I tried this line. When someone came to the table, I asked them, how is your mind treating you? <laughs> and they would say, oh, it's giving me so much trouble. So I would laugh and I would tell them, you should, you should give this book a chance. For sharing books on uh, knowledge and wisdom through philosophy, not only that, but on meditation. And meditation that we can actually use in this age. And I told him that we're different from Buddhists because Buddhists, they're required to be in a secluded, quiet place. Buddhists in this, in this age of Kali, there's no place that, like that. Just like here, we want to chant, but there's loud cars coming by. So the mind is always disturbed. And I met this uh, young man the other day at Bobo Park. He was talking very philosophically, and he appreciated our conversation. And a few hours later, he came back and he said, you don't smoke, do you? And I said, no, we don't smoke cigarettes. And they said, ah. Oh. And I told him, you don't need to do that. You don't need it. And then he said, no, but I have to. So therefore, they're becoming slaves to their senses. They know that they know they can quit smoking, but they don't give it up. So, and they pose themselves as very learned, very controlled. And Balaram Prabhu, he gave me this uh, hat. It says Goloka on it. So I was speaking to this Matsuji yesterday at the Japanese Friendship Garden. And she said, what's Goloka? And I said, that's a, that's, a, that's a very good question. So I explained to her that there are higher planetary systems. And the topmost material planet is called Brahma Loka. And I told her that those that reside in this Brahma Loka, their duration of life is very, very long. Millions and sometimes even billions. But you have to come down. So I told her that even if you achieve the highest planetary uh, material planet, you come back. So you didn't achieve anything. And uh, Dravida Prabhu, he always, he says it's like a, a vacation. You go on vacation and then when your credit card is declined, you have to come back home. So I told her Goloka is a topmost spiritual planet. And I told her that's where our real home is. And I told, her, I told her that life there is eternal. Nobody gets old, nobody grows, nobody gets disease, and we don't die. So she said, wow, that sounds amazing. So I told her you should, you should read more about this uh, Goloka. So she took a stack. She gave a nice donation. And before she left, she said something interesting. Huh? No, it's a different one. And as she was walking away, she turned and she said, see you in Goloka. So I said, yes, I hope so. So we're, we're trying to invite people to Goloka Vrindavan. And there's a nice story about King Indra. He was a heavenly king. He had so much sense of uh, gratification, he had so many facilities. And one day he caused an offense to the feet of his spiritual master, Brihaspati. And so Brihaspati, he cursed him. He said, you're acting like a hog, therefore you should become a hog. So he came down here and took the body of a hog. And when Lord Indra, King Indra, was here on the planet, the heavenly kingdom was vacant. So Lord Brahma, he came down. And he told King Indra, my dear king, you should come back and take rule of the heavenly planets where you belong. But King Indra, he refused. You know what he said? Yeah. He said, I have so much responsibilities here. He was hesitant. 
He said, I have my wife, I have my little piglets, you know, how can I neglect them? So in this way, he was, uh, he was hesitant to come back to his uh, heavenly kingdom. Similarly, Krishna personally came to deliver us. Sarva dharmyam pritya jamam ekam sharanam vraja. It's a very famous uh, verse. And Krishna is saying, abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. Masuchaha. But we're resisting, right? We're thinking there's something more important in this material world. And instead of going back to our eternal home, we're thinking that maybe there's something out here still. I haven't completed my school. I need to get a better career. I need a family. So similarly, we are like King Indra. We're refusing to go back to Krishna. <coughs> so we are considered unfortunate. The golden opportunity to go back home is offered, but we're re rejecting it. In the purport, it says that in old age, however, he becomes, he sometimes becomes afraid of imminent death, which is compared to a roaring lion. I met an atheist. I, you meet a lot of atheists when you go on book distribution. So he said, I don't believe in God. You know? So I told him, you may not believe in God, but you're obeying the laws of God. So he said, what do you mean? So I told him, you have to die. And his eyes opened up. So I told him, the, the law of God is telling us that we must die. We can't keep these bodies forever. So I told him that you're forced uh, to obey the laws of God. Mithyu sarva harashchaham. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am all devouring death. So I told him, you can't keep your family, you can't keep your wealth, you can't keep your home. So it's better <laughs> to understand what death is. You cannot stop death, so God comes to you in the form of death. And he stayed quiet. So he became a little interested, and I offered him a small book, because I knew he was not so uh, in inclined to read big book. So I gave him Beyond Birth and Death. And he, he happily took it. He gave a donation. So people, they're so puffed up. They're thinking that I know everything. Not only that, but they have a misconception about what the purpose of life is. I asked this Matsuji this. I told her, what is the purpose of life? And she said, my purpose is to become a mother. And I, in my head, I was thinking that's also available in the animal kingdom. So this was her purpose, is to become a mother. But I told her there's actually a higher purpose than that. And so I told her the first thing is self-realization, is to understand that you're not the body, but you're the pure spirit soul. You're part and parcel of the supreme soul. And that source is, called, is named Krishna. So I was introducing the books to her, and she got a, a nice stack. It's a four stack book. She gave a donation, and then she was very grateful. She said, thank you, I needed to hear this. There was a, you know, and sometimes even when people have families, they want to get married, sometimes they have unwanted children. There was a, a story of a little boy. He wanted to spend time with his father. And the father was so busy, he kept, he was on his phone, he was talking about business, he was talking about making money, this and that. So the little boy kept tugging on his shirt and said, Father, Father. And the dad, he didn't want to pay attention to him. So he just ignored him. So the, the child kept, uh, he was persistent. So finally the father gave in. And the father said, what do you want? So the little boy asked him, how much do you get paid? So the, boy, the father told him, I get paid this much. So a few days passed, and then the little boy comes and tugs on his father's shirt again. So his father looks down and says, what do you need? So he gave him this money. He said, I would like to have one hour of your time. So people have um, children, but they don't have time for them. So therefore, sometimes there's a lot of uh, disturbances in family life. The mother and the father, they argue. Sometimes the children, they run away. And it reminds me of how Krishna, he's the owner of everything. He's the, he's the most wealthiest person. And sometimes it's compared to a, a very rich father. And due to ignorance, the children run away from home. They want to explore. So then they're out on the streets. So their condition is very miserable. So similarly, Krishna, 
is the most wealthiest person, but we run away from the kingdom of God. We're trying to be here in this mature world, trying to enjoy. In book distribution, we are inviting people back to the spiritual world, but they're refusing. And I see this a lot. What they do is they would take pictures, they would go back and forth, and then thinking that, oh, I'm, I'm doing something productive. So I, I say they're like a hamster on the wheel. They're going nowhere fast. They're not, they're not going anywhere in life. And who are those people that are refusing? It says, Matir na Krishna prata swava mito bi padyate griha vratanam. A person who is too attached to materialistic family life, home, family, wife, children, and so on, they cannot develop Krishna consciousness. And in the uh, fourth canto, uh, Lord Kapila Dev, he says that the love of the women at home and the talk of the children make one a secure prisoner, and thus he cannot leave home. I think it's fourth canto. Yeah. Is that third canto? Okay, third canto. I'm sorry. So, yeah, so he's describing that we're materialistic household life. The man is compared to a prisoner, he can't escape. So he's enticed by sweet talks of the wife, and then Srila Prabhupada says the broken language of the children. The little children, they can't talk, but the, little, the father's thing, oh, how cute. So, so the home, and nowadays people, they put so much importance on a home. They have to decorate it. There's even stores just to decorate your home. And Srila Prabhupada, he uses the example of a, of a rat or a mouse, he makes, he digs a hole, he makes a nice living condition, but then a snake comes and takes it away. So that snake represents time. And family, people put so much uh, emphasis on family life also, like that's the goal of life. Family life is meant to cultivate Krishna consciousness. And like uh, Amoga Lila Prabhu yesterday, he said that one should not be a father, mother, a demigod, a relative, if they cannot deliver their dependence from the cycle of birth and death. They're teaching their children, work hard just like me. You can get a house, you can get this and that. But they don't tell them that you're going to die one day. See? So they're putting that in the background. And a beautiful wife. Everyone is searching for a wife or for a man. Or a woman is looking for a husband and children. And there's actually a new category, dogs. There's a Ramapati and I, we were going to a doctor's office and there was a billboard, there was a new movie coming out. It's called Dogs. So it's gonna be a, a blockbuster hit, meaning it's gonna be very popular. Because Srila Prabhupada says, we worship God, but in the West they worship dog. They're worshiping dogs. And uh, the other day, I saw this uh, dog, it had a little outfit. So I asked the owner, how much did the outfit cost? You know what she said? $200. $200 for, and I asked her, maybe you can contribute to our cause. And she said, I don't have money. <laughs> so all her money went to that little dog. And Srila Prabhupada says that a grahasa's concern is to get out of the family life created by illusion and enter into real family life with, with Krishna. Whereas the Griya made his business is to repeatedly chain himself to so-called family life in one life after another and perpetually remain in the darkness of Maya. There, is, there are these uh, important words like chain and prisoner. What does that indicate? Yeah, you're trapped. And people are willing to chain themselves to family life. And in the third canto, you're right, Dravida uh, Prabhu, Lord Kapila says, he's describing an old man, the condition of an old man. And Lord Kapila Dave says, seeing him unable to support them, his wife and others do not treat him with the same respect as before. Because the wife, she's expecting, you know, give me this, give me that, give me a new dress, give me a new purse. And when the husband cannot provide, there's a friction in the family life. And I was reading also, and Srila Prabhupada says that in some countries, the old men are given poison so that they will die as soon as possible. 
I used to work at an old people's home, and I was a little curious about that, you know. This, this, sometimes the family members, I would come visit, and a few days later, the, the father, the mother, they're having a hard time breathing, you know. <laughs> and Srila Prabhupada says that in some cannibalistic communities, the old grandfather is sportingly killed, and a feast is held in which his body is eaten. So the man works very hard, and that's what he has to, uh, that's his reward. He gets eaten by his family members. And where I used to work, it was memory care and Alzheimer patients. And the family members, they actually saw these uh, elderly persons in their family as a burden to them. You know, they would visit them uh, at least twice a day, and then it starts lessening once a day, and then eventually comes to once a month, and then once a year, Mother's Day or Father's Day. So it's very sad. So in Srila Prabhupada, he says that we, the householders, they should take sannyas when the body's still strong and able, when you're still able to actually get out <laughs> of that entanglement. And on book distribution, I met this uh, interesting guy, I wasn't even finished setting, setting up my book table. So I asked him, hey, what do you do? And he straight up told me I sell drugs. So I told me to, I sell drugs. And I said, this is the medicine to cure you from material entanglement. And I said, oh, nice. So he actually took a set, uh, nine, nine books. And he asked me, how much for these books? And I told him, well, people give around 50 to 100. So he gave uh, $50. And so he was walking away holding these books, and I was thinking, and that guy's fortunate, you know. He's, he has all of Srila Prabhupada's books. And sometimes when I ask him, what do you do, they'll tell me, I'm an engineer, I'm this and that. So I tell him, I'm a heart surgeon. I work on the hearts of the people. And I tell him within the core of the heart, that we have a lot of bad qualities. Envy, greed, lust, hatred, things like that, illusion. So I tell them that these books, they work on the heart. They purify the heart. So they, they, uh, they like that. They appreciate it. So they take books. And yesterday I met this nice lady. Her name was Rose. She came to the temple. So Rose, she had two other friends with her. They were Chinese. And among the three, she spoke the best English. And she was able to uh, have a conversation with me. And, you know, most of the time, most people say, I'll come back. So it's, it's a 50-50% chance. They'll come back, they may not. More like 70, 80, 80. <laughs> 80 of the time, yeah. So I was thinking, oh, that, that's when that got away. But a few hours later, they came back. And the Mataji, she kept asking questions, you know, why do you do this? So I was, ask, I was answering to the best of my ability. And at the end, the other lady, she took out $100. And I was thinking, okay, she's going to ask for change, you know. And then she handed it to me and I asked her, would you like change? And she said, no. And then she asked, can I take these books? And so I took and I, I gave it to her. I said, please take. And so when you present the books nicely, they see the value in the books. But if you present it not so nicely, they, they see it as cheap, you know. And so they were thinking uh, about leaving and going back to Orange County. So I asked them, are you hungry? And they said, yeah, we're about having lunch. So I said, there's a there's an address in the back of that card. You should come to our temple and you should take uh, food, vegetarian food. And I told her it's made with love. So they started looking at each other like, yeah, yeah, made with love. So so I, I called Tyler and I called Saul and I told him, hey, there's three matzis that are coming. Please prepare three boxes. And they actually met Vijay Prabhu. Were they here last night? So they came back, and when they met uh, Vijay Prabhu, they gave another $40. So yeah, our interactions with people, they're very sweet. And Srila Prabhupada, he mentions the word vultures. And Prabhupada says that the so-called modern civilized people are like vultures. Why? A vulture can f fly very high in the sky, but what are they looking for? A dead body, you see. So similarly, people are eating meat. They're, 
so Prabhupada says that they can uh, see within a seven to eight mile radius and they're used to uh, find dead body. And what they do is they circle around the carcass. And there's a famous picture of a, of a very skinny little child, I guess it's in Africa, and there's a vulture behind him and just waiting for the child to die. So similarly, we may go up very high in education, but what is our objective? What are we seeing? So people, they want to get a high education to get a good career to make money. But money is uh, temporary. We don't keep it. So they enjoy killing and then eating dead bodies. So people have become vultures. And Srila Prabhupada says that the leaders are all fourth class men. People are living just like animals. Without regulative spiritual principles and from among themselves, they are electing the biggest animal. So they elect someone that's, that don't restrict them from eating, that don't restrict them from uh, drinking. So they elect another animal. Prabhupada says that a first class are great devotees of the Lord. And second class are the administrative military men. And the third class are the farmers. And the fourth class are the less intelligent. So the first class, those are the people that can guide and administer and the citizens through their words and practical example. So the devotees. And the second class are those who look after the smooth running of the government and the safety of the citizens. And the third class, they grow crops and protect the cows. This is the third class men's business. But nowadays, who protects the cows? There's so much slaughterhouses. So therefore, Prabhupada says everybody's fourth class now. They're no longer interested in protecting cows. And cows are actually the most beneficial animals. They give us milk. And Prabhupada says that milk is a miracle food. A baby can live purely on milk for how many years? Five. Five years. So yeah. And um, so without regulative principles, it is animal life. I was watching dogs yesterday at the park. You know, there's a lot of dogs, dog owners. <laughs> and actually it looks like the dogs are walking the owners. <laughs> and at Bobo Park, you see the dogs, they would, they would smell things, you know. They would pull the owners. And then when they see a squirrel, they chase after it. So I told this person, people are just like dogs. They can't control their senses. They can't control their mind. So we require first-class men to lead. And a devotee should always see that his Vaishnav qualities increase with the advancement of his Krishna consciousness. A devotee should be blameless because any offense by the devotee is a scar on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the duty of a devotee is that he should always be cautious in his dealings with others, especially with another devotee of the Lord. And as devotees, we should set an example for others. So Krishna says, whatever actions a great man performs, common people follow. And whatever standards he sets by exemplary acts, all the world pursues. So we should be clean in behavior. Uh, Krishna Das Kavraj, he actually lists 26 good qualities of a Vaishnav. Uh, I'm not going to say all of them, but I'll mention some of them. He's very kind to everyone. He does not make anyone his enemy. And sometimes that may work against us, just like Prahlad Maharaj. He was very pure, innocent. But just because he was uh, Krishna consciousness, his father had turned against him, and he tried to kill him. So we may not have enemies, but people see us as enemies. He is truthful. He is equal to everyone. He is magnanimous. He is mild. He is always clean. And he is without possessions. He works for everyone's benefit. He is very peaceful. He is always surrendered to Krishna. He has no material desires. And in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it also says, on the other hand, a person devoid of devotional service and engaged in material activities have no good qualities. Just like there's a lot of leaders out there, they don't actually have good qualities. They're drunkards and uh, they're addicted to all these uh, crazy drugs. Just like when someone becomes rich, the first thing that you hear is that he ruins his life by heroin, 
stuff like that. Very strong drugs. And I was uh, reading the other day that uh, celebrities, they don't uh, go outside of their home because then they gained weight, they were no longer beautiful. So they, ha the celebrities, yeah, after the prime of their career, you know, they, they're no longer beautiful, so they hide themselves from the public. And uh, yesterday I had another interesting uh, interaction with the Muslim man. It was almost uh, the time to leave, so I said, you know, I'll spend some time talking to him. And he was actually interested. So we're talking about philosophy, and then he told me, why do you Hare Krishnas have put so much importance on how God looks like, the form of God? So I asked him, can you love someone without knowing how they look like, without knowing their qualities, without knowing their activities? So he said, yeah, you can, but I told him it's very difficult. So they have an uh, impersonal uh, view on, on uh, God. So we were talking back and forth, and then I told him this verse. Shine punye martyr lokum vishanti. So it means that those who are elevated to the higher planetary systems must come down again as soon as the results of their pious activities are exhausted. So I told them, yeah. so I told them that um, heaven, that most uh, religious texts describe, they're temporary because you don't know what. You, and I asked him, can you describe heaven? You know, and he said no. So I told him, if you don't know how heaven looks like, how how long will you be able to stay there? So he said, good point. So at the end of the day, I asked him, if you want to learn more about God, you should take this book. It was a Krishna book. And I guess in the Muslim uh, faith, it, they're prohibited to read other scriptures, right? So he, he took a risk. And I told him, if you want to know more about God, how he looks like, his activities, this is the book here. And I told him that uh, Krishna, he's very sweet. He's not looking for your faults. He's not looking to send you to hell. He's very kind. He's very merciful. So he, he appreciated our conversation. And then he said, my brothers, the Muslims, and the Christians on the weekends, they're always fighting. And he said, I appreciate what you're doing. Because you know? I told him, God has many names. You know, It's not just one. How can you... Um, you can say, limit him to just one name. And then so uh, he took a book, he gave a donation, and he kept uh, shaking my hand. He said, thank you, thank you. So I said, you're very welcome. So our interactions with the outside world can either be a good or a negative, you can say, uh, experience. And so the golden rule with book distribution is always leave them with a good impression. So this is our duty. We're trying to um, invite people back to Krishna. And if they refuse, we try a second time. <laughs> it's like on books. I, I ask them, hey, do you like yoga and meditation? They say no. And I'll tell them, you should give this a chance. And some come back and some don't. So there are um, austerity and going out, but it's very blissful. We know that we're doing something very heroic. We're doing something very beneficial for mankind. It's not that we're offering them <laughs> in the park. A lot of people, their stands, they're, they're pretty much useless. They don't have anything that deals with the soul, the spirit. So we're actually giving them a nice opportunity to, you can say, become perfect, to have eternal life, bliss, and knowledge. And that process is chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, that's all. Any uh, yes, Trivita? Hare Krishna. Hold on, hold on, BJ. Yes. Um, this uh, phrase that we that is common, probably introduced it to us, is Varna Sankara, uh, unwanted children. And I think devotees sometimes misunderstand that, or they confuse a little bit because it's known that you know people have abortions because the children are unwanted. They don't want to have children. They're unwanted children. But that's not what Varna Sankara is. Varna Sankara are children who are born, but because the the uh, Vedic culture has been disrupted, as, Ar as Arjun says in the first chapter, uh, the, the husband isn't there. He's, he's been killed in the war, or whatever. Uh, 
the child be becomes unruly, becomes uh, demonic, you know, because he's not raised properly. And you get m many thousands and millions of them, and it becomes a big disruption. It's not they're unwanted by the parents, they're unwanted by the society. Mm -hmm. That's so it's important to re remember that. Because Thank the, you, otherwise we may think, you know, the other. Dimitri Prabhu. Yes, so in a, uh, in a purport, it says that the uh, uh, death is compared to a roaring lion. And um, I was, uh, could you please uh, maybe elaborate on, uh, on it a little bit? And what ex actually exactly happens at the time of death to uh, some? A sinful person is being, is, will be carried by the Yamadutas. And they get uh, punishment according to their, you can say, karma. And it's actually described, I was reading that they pass through um, a place where they see a, a river is full of stool, full of vomit, like that. So they're preparing to go to uh, the hellish planets and to be trained to a certain body that they will like. Like they'll, they'll be forced to eat stool. And then when they start liking it, they can get a body of a hog. Things like that. Yes, Trevor, he can add more. Because uh, I, I <laughs> this stuck in my mind. Years ago, I read something about a procession in, in Bengal, you know, in the 19th century something, and, and the, the, the guide was leading a, a, a line of people through, through the jungle to some destination. And suddenly a lion came out of the, out of the bush, grabbed the leader, and just took him away. <laughs> Uh, everyone was freaked out, of course, but that, and apparently it wasn't that uncommon. <laughs> and, or maybe it was a tiger, you know. But the point was is that uh, the lion is known as Hari because he's going to take everything, he's going to take your life away. And sometimes you take your body and take it to his lair and eat it, you know. And when we chant Jaya Nishring and Dave at the end of the Kirtan, sometimes, you know, Jaya Nishring and then I chant Jaya Nara Hari, that, that's one word for Nara means human and Hari doesn't mean Krishna. It means a lion mm -hmm. in that context. I think some, sometimes you think, oh, that's Hari, that's another name. Because we all might think Hari. Now, why is Krishna called Hari? Because he takes away all the inauspicious things and he takes away your heart, steals away your heart. And Radharani is known as Hara because she takes Krishna's heart away. <laughs> okay, Vijay Krishna Prabhu. Uh, may I? Yes, please. Yes, um, Govardhan Prabhu, uh, Dandavat Pranams. Uh, uh, my question is, if I take shelter of Krishna at the moment of death, what kind of death will I have? A glorious death. Just like a Jamil, he just, uh, without offense, he screamed out, Narayan! So the Vishnu Dutas came to save him. And there's a book called Second Chance. That was one of the first books that I read. And I, I really loved it because um, it showed the importance of chanting Krishna's holy name. So at the time of death, when you chant Hare Krishna, the Vishnu Dutas will come. And uh, actually, Prabhupada says sometimes Krishna will personally come or Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will come to uh, deliver you himself. So there's a lot of unlimited glories about chanting the holy name. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.